Welcome back to the creek. Today we refinishing this Telecaster. First thing we're gonna do is uh, scuff up the clear coat. And we don't need to take off very much. Actually, we're just taking the shine off it, really, to give the paint something to stick to. And this is just a regular scuff pad. Uh, pretty much just going over it until you get that foggy look like that. Taking all that sheen off. Um, that way our paint has something to grab on. But we want to keep that clear. So later on it'll look like it's just painted over the top. This is the first coat. Um, just real light dusting. I'm using this. Actually this is um, brake caliper paint. And the reason I'm using that on this finish is because it's real durable and it acts like a single stage um, like a single stage enamel paint you don't need a clear coat with it. and so we'll be able to get good results pretty quickly this is the second coat a little bit heavier but really just dusting it on given the the real coat something to grab on to. And I think I'm waiting like 15 minutes in between coats to let it start packing up real good. But there's no real rhyme or reason to how I'm doing it there. Getting a little more paint on there. And then on the third coat is when we'll actually start full coverage where you won't see any of the uh, burst underneath anymore. Here's the third coat. Uh, this is the first actual full coat. So you'll see I'm laying essentially like pushing that wet edge across the surface and laying down one smooth coat, as smooth as I can from a rattle can. But yeah, just pushing that wet surface, about 30 to 50% overlap on each pad. And, and then we'll do one more coat, just to build enough to, you know, if we're gonna wet sand it or if we're gonna buff it, whatever we're going to do. We don't want to burn through it. Same thing, just pushing that edge across. Trying to keep my can parallel with the body. Even though I'm moving quick, because this stuff comes out fast. And then you can start to see what I mean with this caliper paint, is that it builds nice. You already got your shine on there, even though we're gonna take that off, but it lays down good and it, it's durable. You can see we got plenty of orange peel, so you don't have to worry about that. We'll get rid of that, but shining. Once that's fully cured, I like to use these blades that actually have the straight blade and then the back is curved. I use the back edge uh, to actually start pulling this paint away that we lay down. And when I'm doing this, I'm only going down to that clear coat that we scuffed up. I'm not going any deeper than that. And uh, this is where the time goes in. Just pulling that paint layer off. And uh, Kind of make it up as I go along, I guess. I've got an idea of what I want it to look like. Here, I'm just kind of pulling this corner. Usually you get that corner wear over time, so I'm just kind of starting there. But you'll see how much, how much I'm digging into that 
clear coat. How it's turning foggy like that. Don't want to go much deeper than that. And I don't worry about all those scrape marks because I'll get rid of all that later down the road. So right now I'm just pulling paint. It's a lot like scraping binding if you've ever done that, except for you're going back and forth and everything. But using my the fat of my thumb to sort of act as a guide, not get too deep. Um, this is where I decided I wanted to go further with the wear so that it would actually expose some of that burst underneath. I thought that would look cool. And so made a little guideline there that I'm gonna work up to, but it just takes time, a little at a time. And like I say, there's no rhyme or reason to it as far as technique, as long as you get the results you're looking for. just how I do it. I'm sure there's a million better ways. But this was a fun project. Um, I wanted to see what these were like. I've never had one. I went and bought a new, bought it new, the um, Squire Telecaster, just to see. And it actually, it's a cool guitar, it plays nice. The frets out of the box definitely has some bite to them. They need to be addressed a little bit, some fret nib. Um, but they're smooth. That's really the only complaint I had about this guitar, and it's, it's at such a cheap price range. You can't really complain about that. Whatever you get, you're gonna have to do something with a little bit of setup work. I think I set the intonation on it. Put every normal, you know, I think maybe a little truss rod adjustment, I did that too. Overall, I'd buy another one. So now you can see the uh, burst start to come through, and I like that. So this is where I'm working on this edge to make it less of a scraped edge and more of a chipped edge. And you'll see me kind of dig the blade in there a little bit. Kind of pop them off. And so again, I'm not worried about all those lines there, all the blade marks, because we're gonna get rid of all that. Here, uh, it's that same scuff pad that we scuffed it up with at the beginning. And I'm just, Slowly working through again. You don't want to go too deep because we don't want to expose the actual uh, finish on this. You know, we don't want to burn through the clear coat because I'm not putting clear coat over this. That's why I use that single stage paint to begin with. And just that same process in the beginning we're doing here except we're just scuffing through all those razor marks. And just smoothing that clear coat. If you ever painted a guitar or painted a car or anything like this, you already know what this is. Just smoothing the clear coat out. And I like to push that 
scuff pad right up against that edge. Not help. So now we got the uh, buffing compound. I like the Meguiar's. This is the medium grit, I think. Uh, and so I'll buff out all the areas where I exposed the original finish. I'll buff all that out by hand first, just to get rid of as much of the scraping and sanding marks as possible first. And I'm not really worried about the, the red paint here. You can see I'm pulling it off. That's what we're doing. And now I'll switch over to the drill. And then from here, I'm just buffing the whole guitar like you normally would. Uh, trying this detailer. I've never used it. Guitar polish. I've never used this one, but now that the whole thing's been buffed, I like to hit it with something just to clean it. Rubbing alcohol would work just fine too. Uh, just to clean all the compound, anything left over off of there. And now you can see what I was talking about with that single stage caliper paint is you can buff it to a shine just like the clear coat was on there, even though we only put paint on there. And you really can't see in the reflection the difference between that and the original clear coat, which is right here. See how they both shine the same. And so that's why I like to use that when you can. Uh, this is me just addressing those fret nymphs I was talking about. Uh, little homemade tool. And it's been working for years, so I haven't bought it. They really weren't too bad on one side and then on this side. Man. I don't know how I didn't notice it right out of the box. But... Then we just come back with the prep for aisle and hit those corners like normal. Nothing fancy here. Uh, I did notice that the fretboard was dry which is normal for a new guitar. You can kind of expect that. And I've never used this. I think it's called Guitar Honey something. I gave it a shot. It works pretty well, actually. Uh, to condition that fretboard and sort of bring it back to life, to bring it to life. And that just rubs in. And you can see the uh, fret still, they do have a shine to them. They're nice and smooth. I didn't have to recrown anything. I didn't have to polish any fret other than cleaning out my mark. 